Okay, awesome. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Grace Del Vecchio. I use she, her pronouns. I'm the community engagement editor here at 14 East Magazine, and I'm so excited and a little bit sad to welcome all of you to our last public newsroom of the school year on how to document the movement with respect for Chicago's communities. As many of you I'm sure know, it's been a full year since people around the world took to the streets to protest the murder of George Floyd. And since then, journalists, photographers, and documenters of all mediums have learned a lot about the do's and don'ts of documenting. And tonight we have three photographers slash documenters here to discuss what they've learned. Per usual, this public newsroom is inspired by and in partnership with City Bureau. City Bureau is a nonprofit civic, nonprofit civic journalism lab serving Chicago South and West Sides, which brings people together to produce media that is impactful, equitable, and responsive to the public. Before we get started tonight, I do want to take a moment to hold space for a land acknowledgement. Chicago is a part of the traditional homelands of the Council of the Three Fires, the Odawa, Ojibwe, and Potawatomi Nations, for many, as, many, as well as many other tribes, such as the Miami, Ho-Chunk, Sac, and Fox, also called this area home. Located at the intersection of several great waterways, the land naturally became a site of travel and healing for many tribes. Today, Chicago is still a place that calls people from diverse backgrounds to live and gather. American Indians continue to live in the region and Chicago is home to the country's third largest urban American Indian community, which still practices its heritage and traditions, including care for the land and waterways. Thank you so much to the folks at the American Indian Center of Chicago for providing that information and for their constant work and education. Tonight, we're going to start with some questions that we have prepared for our guests, but the chat is open. So please feel free to utilize the ask questions, make comments, whatever you see fit, just please be respectful when you're in the chat and when you speak in general. We will have a time at the end specifically for questions and also for comments and any points you wanna bring up, but you can feel free to utilize the chat the entire time and we'll be sure to address them. Um, if you need any, if you need anything tonight or have any technical issues, we have Claire Malone here. She's one of our associate editors. She's going to be on tech support. So please feel free to message her if you need to, and she can definitely help you out with that. But without further ado, we have three really, really amazing guests with us tonight. We have Isaiah Thapua Benny, Sarah G, or otherwise known as Love and Struggles Photos, and Mateo Zapata. So who wants to start us out? Can y'all just like introduce yourselves a little bit? Tell us a little, about, a little bit about you. Whoever wants to go. I think Sarah should go first. <laughs> Okay, I don't know why I have to go first, but I guess I am the oldest, so I'll go. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Sarah G. I use she, her pronouns, um, and I do also go by um, the moniker Love and Struggle Photos um, for the documentation work that I've been doing in Chicago, um, capturing the freedom struggles that have been going on um, in Chicago for about the past 10 years. Um, I am also an organizer. I organize with Love and Protect, uh, which is an abolitionist collective that supports um, Black women um, and women of color, um, uh, trans and non-trans who have been criminalized uh, for self-defense and for survival. And I also organize with um, Chicago Afro-Socialists and Socialists of Color Caucus of the Chicago DSA. And I'm going to pass it to uh, Mateo? You muted, Mateo. Of course I am. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Mateo Zapata. I was born in Colombia, um, raised in Chicago, uh, photojournalist, creative, uh, who has been in Pilsen for a really long time. Thank you. Hey everybody, um, Chris or uh, Isaiah, I also go by um, the uh, by Thought Poet. Um, I'm a uh, teacher, uh, writer, uh, photographer. Um, ooh, um, I've been doing photography like for real, for real, like maybe like the past five to seven years. Um, I've been doing like music writing and writing like the past 10 plus years. Um, yeah, uh, born um, out west, uh, raised out south, 91st and Langley, Chatham. Um, 
yeah. Uh, what else you want to know? <laughs> I'm sure we'll get to know you plenty more. Thank you so much, three of you. Also, I forgot to say it. How did I forget to say it? Happy Pride Month, everyone. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's get into it. Um, thank you again for being here. Um, so we're gonna start out with a very technical question, actually. Um, what cameras do you shoot with and what editing software do you use and why? I'm gonna popcorn it to that poet. Um, so it's interesting because like um I didn't like necessarily, I don't I don't feel like I ever had like the traditional route of like what stuff I was using. Um like when because my, my grandma had me around like the arts and like around Gordon Park's work like my entire life because she went to Chicago State. Um and she's also like artistic as hell. So like uh, she did a lot of like film stuff. So like um when I started doing music journalism when I first started getting into like the Chicago creative scene. So this was like when Chief Keef wore like a leader's baseball tee and like the world went crazy. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look it up. Um, but yeah, so like I was definitely like camera phone crazy um, just because like, you know, I was just like any other black and brown youth, you know, from CPS. I didn't have the money to buy no expensive ass camera. Um, and yeah, like, you know, people and organizations kind of helped me start figuring out what I should use. So like True Star Magazine, um, which is uh, created and ran by black women, um, they started teaching me how to use a Canon camera. Um, and even just like how to hold a Canon camera, because most people don't even know how to hold a camera in a lot of ways. Um, and, and yeah, like uh, from there, you know, they started teaching me how to use like uh, Lightroom and Photoshop. Um, and I mean, I know I've been kind of, I, I jump kind of from program to program. Um, I know for me, those programs are like the basics. Um, I want to get into film, but it's like extremely expensive. <laughs> Uh, even though it's like it's it's definitely an amazing art form to keep up, but um, yeah. Uh, I will uh, popcorn to uh, Sarah. Most of the time that I've been documenting in Chicago, I was using various Nikon cameras. Uh, my first real digital SLR camera was the Nikon D50, uh, which is really old. Um, and then the camera I used after that was the D90 and then the D7000. And I used the D750 um, for from 2015 on. And it was just this past late fall that I switched to a mirrorless system. So now I've been using the Fujifilm X-T4, um, which is a crap sensor. But what happened was that, um, as I was documenting more and more, um, it was just physically really demanding to be carrying the heavy equipment that I was using. Um, and I often, I'm really bad with like um, taking care of my body in a lot of ways. And so I'm often holding my camera like without any wrist strap, you know, I have the strap on it, but I, I just don't use the strap at all. And so I'm usually like, freehanding it like and holding my camera above my head and usually I have you know like my heaviest lens on it and so that got to be really taxing um, on my arm and so I switched to the mirrorless because it's just smaller and lighter um, and I actually really like it um, and I also use Lightroom like I'm pretty simple when it comes to editing I don't know how to use Photoshop I barely know how to use Lightroom to be honest. Um, and I'm pretty basic uh, with my editing. And most of the photos that I um, post on Instagram are edited in Lightroom on my phone. Um, so that's the system that I've been using. So, Mateo? Yeah, um, I had a, a 35 millimeter camera when I was like really young, but I didn't really know how to use it too well. It was like, I just thought it was cool. I thought it was a cool machine you know, just putting a film in or whatever. Um, the first DSLR I had was a Canon Rebel T2i. That camera kind of changed the game for video because it sort of made HD video accessible to consumers uh, at the time. And I shot a lot of video with that. Um, and then uh, from that, I moved to the Canon 5D Mark III, which is a really great camera for its time period for photography and for video. Um, 
there was this uh, brand called Magic. What's it called? Um, something Magic. They basically hacked the Canon camera so you could actually shoot raw video with the uh, with the five D Mark III. Um, and I stuck with that camera for a really long time. Um, I had all the accessories for it, the extra battery pack. Um, and there was this sort of, obviously there was the influx of 4k and I shoot a lot of video aside from my photography. So when 4k hit the market, you know, there was sort of like this need for people to shift. So I tried the Panasonic Lumix. They came out with a 4k camera that was really affordable, but I didn't like their, uh, their color profile and their, their sensor It was like a three quarter sensor, which is just really small. Not that, not that good for, for low light at all. And um, Canon users are waiting for the Canon 5D Mark IV, if you're into Canon or if you like geek out over camera gear. And when they released the specs for it, it was just, it was ridiculous. You know, it was just, it was a huge disappointment. And I think there was a, a lot of Canon users that, you know, they either went to Panasonic, um, you know, or they went to uh, Sony. You know, Sony started coming out with the Alpha series cameras and they were great. They were lighter. Um, they shot really well. You know, their ISO sensitivity rate was really good. The prices were incredibly competitive. The only drawback with Sony is that their batteries just die really quick. But I switched to Sony, you know, and um, I've liked it ever since. Uh, it works really well for my photos, for my uh, for my video work. Um, I don't really edit my photos too crazy, to be honest with you. I'm not, you know, sort of like how Sarah said, I'm really not that well versed with Photoshop, to be honest with you. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't get too into the, the post. I try to get, um, you know, the light however I want it when I'm actually shooting. Um, as far as video, I've been using Premiere for, you know, over 10 years at this point. It's great. I like it. Uh, I know how to use it. People use Final Cut Pro. That's cool. I have nothing against them. It's a good program. I just never used it. Uh, and the software that hacked Canon was called Magic Bullet. That's what it was called. Um, I had to remember that right quick. Um, but yeah, uh, as far as like Lightroom, I've, I've kind of dabbled with Lightroom here and here and there. I mean, if I have a photo that I really, really like or photographs that I feel real strong about, I'll definitely sit there and take my time, you know, in Lightroom and, and, you know, really work with it. But for the most part, I don't put too much energy into the post as is. Awesome. Thank you. Yada's yeah, got a full free photography lesson right there. I'm sure all the non-photo folks are like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> um, but anyway, Thea, thank you. Um, but moving on. Um, a lot of folks have been documenting the movements over the past, like, you know, year, particularly, and some of them don't have any connection to the movement at all. And this is, I guess we can make this very specific to Chicago, um, or in general, actually, why am I saying that? Um, so do you think that people who are not invested in the movement should be documenting it or reporting it? Whoever wants to start. I can, uh, take a stab at that. So um i know the way that i even got into uh being a part of the chicago community um low-key was because of sarah g um I, I i've never said this out loud <laughs> so this is the first time hearing this but like um i was like super super shy um and i mean mind you i was also like a a, a, a music writer um so i used to work on a lot of like um, so like Chance the Rapper before Acid Rap, like, you know, Tink, like all of the Chicago artists that we know and love today, like I was like going to open mics with them. Um, so I kind of grew up in like the YCA media scene, kind of, only because I also grew up in Chatham. So it's like I knew about the scene, but I didn't know about the scene. And so like um, going from there. Uh, I just realized like once I started getting into the, the organizing community in Chicago, um, I mean, I was I was around some very, very just amazing people. So like uh, this, I'm talking about like if you know who Charlene is, who ran uh, Black Youth Project 100, um, like 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 Paige when like Asada's Daughters was first created. Like this is like when I almost want to call it like the genesis of uh, like, I guess, 
current day organizing or something like that. And so, you know, I was just really scared to say or do anything. And so I would always see Sarah G, you know, taking the photos. She has like a bunch of photos of me. And, you know, I, I just was like, okay, I want to do something, but I don't know how to like do it and not like kind of, I guess, I don't know, be weird about it. You know what I'm saying? And so um, I just, I just said, fuck it. I just started shooting. Um, and it kind of, you know, because I kind of, kind of going to Sarah and Mateo, like I, I've never really had like a real traditional practice in photography. It was just, I was always around it. So it was kind of like, yeah, I know what this would look like, how it would, like this would look cool and this or that or whatever. And so um, I was, I mean, I've been shooting in the Chicago community for about the last five years. Um, it's just, I don't, I, I was always weird about how to show that, you know what I mean? Just because like a lot of the identities of organizers, you know what I'm saying? Like you do have to be very cautious with that, uh, especially when you're posting stuff. And so um, for me, it was just very important that the community trusted what I was doing. Um, and mind you, this was five years ago. Um, so this past year, it was kind of like when everything went, to, when, when, when shit went up on um, May 30th, it was like all the folks that I knew that were like organizing back then, they kind of like popped out, you know what I mean? But unfortunately, you know, we kind of, uh, we kind of got our ass whipped in like those first couple of weeks, you know, going into 2020. And so a lot of the older organizers I knew, they weren't out, you know what I mean? Like they were healing. They were really like sitting down because it was a lot of like physical trauma um, and internal trauma that was going on in the Chicago community. And so I just kind of said, you know what? I'm going to just do what I can. And I just kind of started shooting. And, you know, because I knew the community so well, you know, at this point, I was just like, let me make sure what I'm putting up, people like understand it. But it's also like, I'm not trying to be no like super duper, like journalists, you know what I mean? It's like, I want people to understand, like, it's me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you know who I am. And it's like, this is coming from who I, what I can say, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I just so happen to be a poet, you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, I just, I just always kind of been figuring it out. And what's, again, what's so crazy is um, with, and I mean, Sarah G will tell you uh, herself with the photo she did with like Freedom Square, like, it, it, I mean, you you just have to see the photos. It's just like one of the most amazing collections of photos ever. And it's like, she had to get trust from the community to even do that shit. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's like, I mean, on average, there's hella photographers that come through on some just like Chicago music shit to get on. And then you never hear from them again. You know what I mean? So it's like, this is again, like when Chance the Rapper and Chief Keef and Lil Durk and, I could just go on. We're like coming up. Like I, I was, I, I've seen these photographers. You know what I'm saying? Like they, you know, just help having that privilege. You know, they were able to get a really expensive camera. You know what I'm saying? Like we kids coming out of CPS, we don't know shit about creating for real, for real. You know what I mean? So it was like we kind of just going with whoever got the money, whoever got the resources, for real. And so yeah, you know, once they got on, you know what I'm saying? Once that artist got on, you know, people would leave. You know what I mean? And and that's just kind of like what. And that, that was just something that people did. And so, again, with the Chicago organizing community, it's completely different. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, you know, we, it's like even now, like that community of like documenters that the community can actually trust, that's becoming more of a thing because of what happened this past year. Um, so that's like, yeah. And I mean, I can get into the story later, but like it was even a point this past year where I was literally going to shut down my entire Instagram page just because like, my reputation in this community was in question as far as like if I could be trusted or not and I'm like that's for me that's way more important than anything you know what I'm saying and like they were like no you ain't gotta do that I'm like that's just that important to me because I was raised in game banging shit in Chicago you know what I'm saying so it's like for me it's always I always had like a very this is a very special community and it's like if you're not trusted in this community you know they can like that's your life you know what I'm saying? And so it's like, that's how I've always thought. And it's like this past year, especially what happened in Pilsen this past year, like that's a lot of how the community was thinking. You know what I mean? So like, even when I was like um, privileged enough to shoot photos for the Miguel Vega um, uh, vigil that took place this past summer, that was because I was working with the organizers that put that shit together. That wasn't no like, oh, we like, no, nah, like they knew, they knew who I was, you know what I'm saying? That's actually where I think I met um, Mateo at, you know what I mean? But it's like, you know, 
it's, it's, it's very much so like you have to be very much so uh, in, you have to care about the community just because like what we put out is what people are seeing about the South and West sides of Chicago. And I think individually, I think all three of us kind of like figured that out, so. Thank you. No, yeah. I mean, I think every what everybody said rings true. Um, for me personally, um, my experience with organizing started in uh, with the immigrant civil rights movement in 2006. There was a huge mobilization on May Day, May 1st, 2006. So I was I was a student at the time. I didn't feel there were really that many young people involved in the organizing around immigrant civil rights in Chicago, um, you know, within that landscape. And so I just sort of, you know, uh, a few of us, a few of us kind of forced ourselves in there. And, you know, that was sort of my experience um, in terms of organizing. And, um, you know, uh, I did document some of that, but at that point I was way more of an organizer, to be honest. Um, I did document a lot of the, uh, the, the NATO protests in 2012, a lot of protests in Chicago around Rakia Boyd uh, as well. Um, and just subsequently other things that have happened after that, obviously in the city. Um, I mean, I think to what, you know, both of these other, um, you know, photographers with their own incredible, you know, unique experiences said, uh, I think you just have to be mindful, you know, um, I don't take a photograph of someone without asking them. That's just me. Not everybody does that. Um, you know, obviously you're in certain situations where you do take a wide angle shot. You're not going to ask everybody that's in the crowd or that's in that photograph, you know. Um, but I think that, you know, there's obviously the trust factor that Isaiah talked about. You know, I think that's huge. I know one of the things that was brought up at the first Black and Brown Unity rally last year, which took place in Pilsen after like a whole week of, you know, anti Blackness taking place um, in predominantly Mexican neighborhoods on the South side uh, at that black and brown unity rally, you know, the organizers, they made it clear that they wanted people from the community to document that because there was people there. There was people, you know, like Isaiah, I'm sorry, I don't know if, if you were there, Sarah, or not, but if you were, um, you know, there was just sort of this declaration made right before we actually uh, started the march it was just like look like if you're not a person of color like don't document us you know we're not here for your entertainment you know uh, a lot of us are angry you know and this is not a matter of entertaining you this is a matter of just documenting history in our community and so I thought the fact that that conversation was brought to the forefront you know within an action was really interesting uh, I don't think I've ever heard that context arise in an action specifically in the way that it was phrased that day. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think that, you know, there is that fine line of unfortunately, you know, journalists and photographers that, you know, they aren't necessarily in it to help anyone tell their story. You know, they're just in it for the shock value, you know, and, um, you know, once you, are a photographer or a journalist, or once you work in media, especially in a city like Chicago, you're going to be able to tell the temperature, you know, wherever you're at and see what everybody's on. But that's how I would answer that. Yeah, um, I, I agree that um, it's important to have a connection to the communities that you're documenting, if that's the work that you're going to be doing. Um, I, I don't expect people like reporters um, to um, actually have a con that kind of a connection or that kind of an investment. Um, and the things that we're documenting still need to be reported on. Um, and that's why it's important to have people who are organizers, who are in relationship with organizers, to be doing the documenting as well, um, because th the way that the story gets told is important. Um, and as you know, Mateo said, you know, sometimes people are documenting not specifically um, to contribute to the organizing effort, but you know, to just post on social media, you know, and 
um, I think it's really important to be mindful. What is the story that, you know, the organizers are trying to tell what, you know, and to, um, to tell the story from the point of view of the people who are, are directly and most impacted. Um, and so I think that has been like the biggest lesson for me in the years that I've been documenting is developing that um, accountability uh, with organizers. Um, and also to be, you know, an organizer myself, like I, you know, I do identify um, as an organizer um, and those relationships that I've developed as an org organizer, you know, it's been um, really important in, in the way that I've documented the work going on in Chicago. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. Um, this next question, actually, I think you all touched on a little bit, but I want to I want to ask it directly. Um, when photographing or filming in actions, what is your personal protocol for showing identifying features of those of the action? So showing faces or showing tattoos or just showing any really identifying features? What how do you personally handle that? Um, yeah, so I think and I mean, this is, and again, this is like kind of what I've been doing kind of since I've started shooting like, like protests or community related stuff. Um, I kind of just like uh, Mateo was saying, I kind of really do a temperature check. I think as a photographer, especially in the Chicago community, you really have to be kind of on it when it comes to like, is this something I should be shooting? Should I put the camera away? Um, and, you know, that really says a lot to the organizers, like, okay, is this photographer here on some, like, I'm trying to get some clout, or um, are they really about building? Because, I mean, I, I mean, I hate to say it like this, but, like, this past year, people think that, you know, it really is a game when it comes to the community. So, like, you know, even this past year, uh, when the police uh, pepper spray and brutalized uh, folks on uh, in the West Inglewood community um, because they shot, um, uh, uh, I think he was like 15 years old and, you know, the cameras immediately popped out. Like, I, like these were like, these photographers had never been in Inglewood ever, you know what I mean? And so, you know, uh, GD's over there is like, yo, like we got a serious problem. You know what I mean? Like, like mind you, this is, these are like areas where like, the cameras do cut it is like if they do pop out it's only like shooting music video or something like that you know what i'm saying but it's like in inglewood like it's we're like two seconds away from being gentrified and we're like two seconds away from like still being really just like shitty with like the 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 architecture and stuff like that so like when it comes to events um i've always just kind of made sure like you know whoever was speaking you know if they were okay with me using their photo um you know I tried to like go in that direction um but this past year was really different um I got definitely kept being asked um, uh, uh, several times like you know can you please take this photo down can you please like you know cover this and cover that and honestly they didn't have to ask me that like they could have just reported my shit you know what I'm saying and 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 these were like organizers that were like, you know, hitting my DM, like, you know, these, like, it, that, that's, you also have to realize, like, these people are, are like, hitting you up, these people also have cases, you know what I'm saying, like, there are still a lot of cases that, like, organizers have, you know, from getting arrested, unfortunately, from this past year, and so, you know, um, I try to make sure, like, at least the face is covered, um, and I also try to think about what the protest was, um, and again, if, if, if the organizers are saying, like, you know, please be, please be aware, please be, um selective with you know who's shooting or whatever like that i try to make sure just off that when i'm posting i'm like blocking out faces you know what i'm saying um yeah yeah this is a question that i've really wrestled with um this past year and um i've talked to a bunch of other documenters about it and it's an ongoing conversation because we definitely don't want to do the work of the state for them um, in terms of identifying people in certain situations um, that could potentially um, criminalize them. Um, and so as Chris said, um, I usually feel out like um, the level of, um, I guess in terms of like how, 
whether I expect the action um, to become violent or not in terms of like clashing with the police. Um, and some actions are, they're, they're pretty straightforward and chill. And with those actions that I usually don't worry about um, uh, identifying people in those photos. And one of the things that I do try to do when I do take photos is I do try to make eye contact with the people that I'm photographing as much as possible. Um, and I do keep my camera um, visible. And um, one of the things in, uh, with documenting for as long as I have, um, most of the people people sometimes can't recognize me if I don't have my camera. So like I'm, I'm pretty identified with my camera and as a photographer um, and that also helps as well. And um, oftentimes I will ask the organizers, you know, what their comfort level is, you know, checking in with them. Um, and a lot of times I'm asked to document actions. And in those cases, you know, they fully expect the participants to know that they're being documented, um, even if it's like an arrestable action. And in those cases, um, then I don't worry about um, identifying, you know, having ident identifying features. But this is something that we do need to be um, thoughtful about and have conversations about because we do need to, you know, protect our community. Yeah, no, like I said earlier, um, you know, I tend to just take the two seconds before I capture the image to just make it clear that I'm a photographer and I'm about to take a photograph of you. For the most part, I would say 9.8% of 9.8 times out of 10, everybody's like, yeah, for sure, you know, and obviously they appreciate, you know, the, um, the time taken to just ask, you know, um, I don't have a really like, uh, long zoom on my camera either. So I can't like take a photo from far away. If you know how a camera works, like I only have so much of a range. So they're going to see me like, you know, 10 feet in front of them with a camera. So I have to kind of address that uh, before I take a photo. Um, and there's been instances where, you know, there'll be people like, oh, you know, I'd rather not show my face or, you know, I think what's really cool sometimes is people will be like, oh, I don't, I don't want to show my face, but still take the photo and they'll literally like cover their eyes, you know, but they'll still pose for the photo. I think that's kind of cool. Um, you know, I think the only time that I, you know, that I've been concerned about uh, publishing uh, or posting photos from an action is where there's an action in which the people involved are possibly in question of having broken some sort of a law, you know, um, or if there's a point of contention, you know, um, for instance, like, you know, uh, there's certain photos from the weekend where there was people breaking into businesses that I have that I haven't posted because, you know, those people are clearly there's, there's an issue there. Right. Um, I think at the action at the Christopher Columbus statue, I've never shown anyone's face from any of the photos that I took that day. I actually had to put my camera down and, and help people because it was just that violent uh, at that action. But I, I took some great photos, uh, really liked the photos that I took, but uh, you know, I think it was just, just out of respect, you know, for, for the people that were there too, because um, that wasn't so much of an action as much as it was like just the straight up confrontation with police, you know? And I think there's people that are in those photos that saw a lot of violence they've never seen before. And that may have seen violence inflicted on people they were with. And obviously a photograph of that, um, you know, is something that, uh, might not mean to them the same thing it might mean to me as a photographer. So I've never shown anyone's face from that action. So yeah, you just have to exercise, you know, some sort of ethical compass, you know, you have to figure it out. And if you're not sure, just ask somebody, you know, it's a conversation. Yeah, yeah, thank you all three of you. And and for pointing out those actions uh, specifically. I'm actually gonna throw it right back to you, Mateo. Um, and then after I ask those questions, Sarah G and 
Chris, if y'all want to like add something, please, please do. But um, in April, in response to the death of Adam Toledo at the hands of CPD, he wrote an op-ed, which was published in the Chicago Tribune. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to link that in the chat as well. Can you talk a little bit about your decision to write this piece and how it contributes and maybe even strengthens community narratives and documenting? Um, I mean, between us, I think the issue was is that there, there honestly just wasn't anyone on staff at the Tribune that could speak to that. You know, um, if you didn't grow up in an environment similar to what Adam was living through, then I'm not too sure your perspective on his life or his death or him being murdered is valid, in my opinion. You know, um, that's just me. Uh, I think there was, unfortunately, narratives that were trying to justify him being killed by a police officer. And this is before the tape came out, before the body cam footage came out. And that really, you know, it made me very angry. It really disappointed me that, you know, there were journalists out there trying to justify a police officer killing a 13 year old without even having the complete evidence without having the complete story without knowing what actually occurred you were already assuming that you know this 13 year old uh deserved to be killed by police and that just didn't sit well with me it was just i thought it was just you know for lack of a better word uh, i just thought it was fucked up and i couldn't believe that there were people that were actually like really invested in demonizing this kid and you know i grew up in a similar environment to his you know, and there was an older person that gave me a gun when I was a teenager, too. Mm -hmm. So um, I felt like I just had to kind of speak to reminding people of the fact that he was 13 and that he's still a human and that he didn't deserve to get killed. Um, I didn't know what was on the body cam footage at the time. Um, obviously, there was like a thousand rumors, right? But, you know, you can't necessarily let that, you know, uh, determine, you know, what you think or, or how you see a situation. Um, but I, I felt that there just wasn't, you know, uh, a real solid description of what it's like growing up in a neighborhood like that in Chicago, you know, and I think that unfortunately in media, there also tends to be this very harsh black and white binary, you know, where the experience of the Latino community is, pretty invisible. I mean, no one ever really talks about it, you know? Um, and there's a lot of, you know, Latino youth in Chicago and in the surrounding suburbs. And so I just felt it was something that just had to be said, you know, like there, there's just, there was certain circumstances around his life that I found out about. And, you know, obviously, um, you know, the environment that surrounds 24th and Sawyer is very clear if you ever go there or if you've been in that area, which I don't think some of the people that wrote about him deserving to be killed probably ever walked on, you know, a block in that neighborhood, whether in, during the day or at night. Um, so, yeah, I, I just felt that it was a narrative that just had to be sort of just put out there and made clear. That's it. Like, it's not what, you know, Tom, Bob and John think, you know, from their house in I don't know where, you know, but coming from where I'm at and, and where I grew up at, uh, you know, it's like this. And, you know, I'm really glad I got the opportunity to do that. And, you know, there was, uh, you know, there's a lot of people, educators specifically that really appreciated the article, which I thought was, was pretty, um, you know, which I thought was pretty dope. Um, I also just want to be clear. I mean, I received multiple death threats, you know, from ghost accounts in my DMs and via email from people, you know, from the Blue Lives Matter crowd. And I don't think I've ever said that before to anybody because I really don't care. And I'm not scared of people on the Internet. And so, um, you know, I did actually talk to one reporter about it because he had told me about him dealing with that and he was just like he's like yeah man that's just gonna happen but um no i mean regardless of all that i'm just really glad that i was able to just 
sort of try to contextualize, you know, his humanity and his life and what it's like growing up, you know, in a neighborhood like that, in a city like Chicago, because, you know, obviously, you know, I'm nowhere near Adam's age, but it's an environment and a situation that Chicago has been dealing with for a very, very long time. And it hasn't changed, you know? Um, and there's just, yeah, I think the Chicago police department, unfortunately has just created a certain kind of culture that some journalists may not feel comfortable writing about, or that people might not feel comfortable reporting about, you know? So, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, it wasn't easy to write by any means, you know, but um, yeah, I just, I think that in situations like that, you know, um, black and brown people should not be dehumanized, you know, at this point any longer in media. Thank you. Thank you for writing that and for sharing that with us. Um, Sarah G, Chris, do either of you want to like add to that or just adding humanity to Yeah. Um, so, I mean, whew, uh, so just speaking to like everything Mateo uh, experienced um, as, a, as, a, as a documenter, um, definitely went through the same type of things. Um, I think with everything that happened with Adam's Toledo coverage, um, it was it was so yeah it was a weird time in the organizer community just because like you know as far as documenters like I think this was kind of a time where we all were kind of getting the same type of messages um, if we even decided to touch you know putting this on our platforms uh, shit I know my account got hacked actually that week that the shit popped off um, and so yeah it was you know. For me, I, 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 the, the photos that I took, I, it was a lot of, you know, I just, I, and I, I think I kind of made sure I, I, I stated in everything I posted how I was personally feeling, um, just because I feel like going to uh, Mateo's point, like people really kept trying to like justify that. And I'm just like, at the end of the fucking day, it is a 13 year old child. You know what I mean? Like, this is no different than Jasmine Adams. This is no different than Rakia Boyd. Like, this is no different than any black or brown youth that has been shot and killed by the police since like 2020 began. You know what I'm saying? So I think for me, it was especially like identifying as an organizer. Um, it was about really trying to make sure that that was painted, like just painfully clear. Um, and, and yeah, I think that was like the gist is like, I think for every photographer that posted something about Adam Sulio, like we really had to make sure we stated in how we posted our content that we did not give a fuck what people were saying. Like it is not like that, that like that's unforgivable. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, yeah, I mean, that's not the first time that's happened. Uh, and I, I know for me personally, I definitely felt, I just definitely felt afraid um, just because I mean, I was uh, beaten and arrested um last year in high park we're calling it the battle of high park now um and so i know i i know firsthand just how like dismissive we are as black and brown people to police you know what i mean so it's just like when people think about this blue lives matter shit it's just like if y'all seriously endorse any of that you clearly do not care about black and brown lives because any i mean and i mean it's, it's almost like our photos should just kind of do the storytelling or the, the the same itself. You know what I mean? It's like like clearly the police do not care about black and brown lives. You see what I'm saying? Like they're trying to like yeah, it's it's a whole other topic. But um, yeah, I think um, that was one of the first times I really felt connected to the to like a community that was not like organizers or like creatives. Like it was like a documenting community. I know I talked to Mateo. Um, and Sarah specifically about kind of like how they were moving with a lot of this because I was honestly about to shut my page down like I said because I was kind of just like done um, with the attacks um, and I just remember Mateo saying like yo fuck them like no cap like I think at the march that took place that was one of the first things he said and I was like bet you know what I mean and I talked to Sarah and she was just like I actually am about to retire so I need y'all to actually be out here and I'm like 
no, you can't retire. You've been, you're the reason why I'm even doing this shit. And it's just like, you know, that, that was something that I wasn't expecting was that the, that a community of documenters, you know, kind of started springing up. You know what I mean? Um, I, after that action, and, and it was before that too, but I think that was something that I was just not expecting. And it, it, it definitely re-encouraged me to keep doing this. Cause I mean, it's not something, this, this ain't no easy shit. You know what I mean? Like being out here seeing, you know, like real people crying and like really in trauma and really in hurt, you know what I'm saying? At these protests and these vigils, like this shit's not for show. You know what I mean? And I feel like a lot of people feel like, a lot of people treat this like trends in Chicago. You know what I mean? Cause it's like, you see Adam Salito's hashtag and then you see some shit Chance the Rapper did. And it's just like, we need y'all to understand like these are two completely different universes. You know what I'm saying? To, to, to Mateo's point is like where Adam grew up is really no different than if you go to 95th in Michigan. You know what I'm saying? Mostly I don't know where that is because that's where a lot of black and brown youth lose their lives and a lot of black and brown youth also have to figure out how to survive. You know what I'm saying? On some hood shit. You know what I mean? And I mean, that's kind of where, that's what people are uncomfortable saying, but it's like, yes, like these, these quote unquote hoods, these quote unquote spaces that Adam Toledo grew up, like these spaces are like this because the mayor of Chicago refuses to fucking put funds where they belong. Like there should be no reason why Two, over $200 million go to COVID relief funds for police. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and Adam Toledo's surroundings, his space is the way that it is. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, that doesn't make no fucking sense to me. So I'm running at this point, but I'm sorry. <laughs> You're definitely allowed to rant. Um, Sarah G, do you want to add anything to that before we move on? Um, yeah, I just, you know, I really appreciate Mateo writing that um, op-ed and, you know, we're documenters and we make images, but um, I think as movement documenters, th th there's something behind the images, you know, there's definitely um, a narrative, you know, and there's definitely a political analysis, you know, behind the images that we take and um, we we don't just document, we also care about these struggles that we're documenting. And I think it's important to be able to articulate that. And to be honest, writing is like not my forte. I, I love the art of writing. I hate doing it. Um, and it's something that I really struggle with, um, but it's something that I do try to do when I post my photos, like on Instagram. Um, I do try to add some level of analysis, you know, and I do try to frame my photos. I mean, for me, I'm an abolitionist and um, I focus on abolitionist projects in Chicago and that's what I primarily document. And so um, that's the framework that I'm always thinking about, like when I, you know, share words to go um, with my photos. And I think it is important for people who want to do this kind of work um, to not just take images or take video, uh, but to also be thoughtful about, you know, why this needs to be documented, you know, and um, to be able to um, tell the stories of these communities um, in a way um, that is respectful um, to them and that centers um, the people who are actually in the struggle. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you to all three of you again. Um, so yeah, changing gears a little bit, um, a lot of folks that document movements are often doing so for free. Um, are there any ways in which you would like to see documenting become more sustainable or documenters, those who are documenting be like sustained in any way, like monetarily or otherwise, um, for their work? I'm a, ooh, Jesus. Uh, okay. So before I even answer that, I first want to say like, if you look, and I mean, I took the other day to just like scroll through like Sarah and Mateo's work. And then I also looked at my own shit. And it's like, I just realized like, first of all, we need to do some type of gallery and like, I don't know, like kick the proceeds back to some organizations in the city. I'm just throwing it out there right now, right? Um, but no, uh, so I actually, so to answer that, um, I actually have a story. So I actually, this past year, um, I was very much so like, questioning should I get paid for anything that I'm doing when it comes to this work um and I mean it's only because like again because I've been a part of this community for like five years plus now 
it was just like, I know I've done a lot of this work, you know, for free. And it was never me thinking about like, oh, let me get paid. It was more so like, I really like shooting this shit. Like, I don't know if you've ever been to these like, these community spaces but like the beauty that's in these spaces is really you really have to take it in your damn self and it just like it makes you really want to like better the community you know what i'm saying it's just like going to uh, i think sarah's point like like both like all, all three of us are organizers and we really just want to see the community look better you know what i mean it's like there's no reason why the south and west sides of chicago can't look like wicker park or humble park you see what i'm saying like we literally want the same exact thing, which is to be able to go and like have access to resources, access to food, access to, you know what I'm saying? Just like, like, like just genuine resources, you know what I'm saying? To actually live and not, you know, just scraping from each other, you know what I mean? So to the, to the point, um, like I said, I was questioning that. And so I'm scrolling on Facebook, like me and my partner just like chilling. And um, it's like, it, this is like Black History Month. And so, um, you know, it was this uh, particular organizer uh, who had put out like this clothing campaign for Black Lives Matter uh, for Black History Month. I was like, okay, cool. And so didn't think much else of it. And so I was like, finally, I saw the video a couple of times. I'm like, you know what, let me just look at the video, right? The photos, the first thing I saw in the video were three of my photos from five years ago. And th like these, these weren't even from last year. This was from five years ago. So immediately my heart dropped because I'm like, first of all, I don't even have these up. Like, how the fuck did y'all find these for one? And for two, I was just like, okay, can I get a credit? I'm not even thinking about money. I was like, can I get a photo credit? Can someone tell somebody I did this shit? Like, you know, I just want to build, you know what I mean? And so, you know, from there, you know, the person reached out to me and, you know, the clothing company, uh Levi uh they're immediately like yeah let's cut you a check blah 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 and I'm just like how the hell did y'all get to this point and not ask who you know the photos belong to and the person who gave the clearance to use my photos hit my line immediately uh it was just like yeah I don't think this is your photo and I was just like you do know I helped you organize this event like the actual protest that the photo was shot like like I helped you organize it and interestingly enough, they actually tried to tell me the photo was Sarah G's photo. And I was just like, if you take, if you pay attention, our styles are a little different. And it was, I think it was really hurtful because it was a black woman that was like basically telling me like, you didn't do this. And I'm just like, damn, like I would never do that to you. You know what I'm saying? And it, it, it's kind of like from that point to this one. So this is like recent as hell. This is like, within the past couple of months. Since then, I've just really been like, yo, I need people to understand, like, I, I, I took this, you know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to get no money, money for real off of it, even though I tend to, like, really not think about, like, yeah, these are historic things, and, you know, people are, like, you know, trying to find, you know, where they can find these historic things, but I, I think that was never my, I never thought about it like that, you know what I mean? But it's also, like, I still have hospital bills from when I got arrested. You know what I mean? Like I still like have to go to the doctor and I still have to pay these medical bills. Like, I gotta go fund me right now. You know what I'm saying? That I have to fill out. And it, and it took me like a year and some change to fill it out. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I think with saying all that, it's like, please just think about if you can compensate the photographer. You know what I'm saying? And it's not even just about compensating the photographer. It's compensating or like, like, crediting them for their time and their in, in their presence right like on some real like real talk the 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 perspectives that Mateo has is a, a million times different than the perspective that Sarah G has and I don't even mean like in their photography I mean like if you just talk to them you know what I'm saying and realize like as an organizer like yo I'm giving you a perspective that y'all are like y'all don't y'all can get nowhere else you know what I'm saying like the, this is this is a, a very unique perspective and it's like, again, it ain't got to be money, you know what I'm saying? I, like, I, I believe in sacred economics, but it's like, that has to be a conversation, you know what I mean? And it's just like, you have to respect the people that are, like, documenting this shit. And, and I, I guess, again, like, going back to Gordon Parks, like, I don't think he thought about that shit like that. But at the, at the same time, he did because, you know, this was the first Black photographer to shoot for Time Magazine, you know what I mean? So it's just like, yeah, yeah.
Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think that's something that a lot of people don't realize about us sometimes is that, you know, we're not out there, um, you know, on a salary or an hourly like wage, you know, I think that's a huge misconception people have. Um, and we never were, you know, I never was when I, you know, any of the times that I've been out there with my camera. Um, do I think that we should get compensated? I mean, I think there should be some sort of like of a, some sort of like an organized, you know, I don't know if it's like an interface is the right word or like if I think if there was a better understanding from media orgs here locally, right? And they knew about all the work that these great photographers put in, it would be great to see them, right? Be like, okay, I'm going to. I'm going to license some photos from Sarah, you know, from this. I'm not going to put whatever, you know, homie who's a reporter that just took this one photo that's trash with his iPhone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, like have like, okay, we have this situation. You know, this guy Isaiah just posted some really good photos. Let's use his photos in this news story, right? And then they can license that. I think that I think would be really good to see, you know, and I'll keep it a stack. I mean, I even see some of these staff photographers that work for some of these, uh, you know, newspapers out here and man, mm -mm, I, I don't get it, you know, <laughs> but I, I think that there's a ton of, you know, freelance photography talent in Chicago that's totally untapped. Um, I mean, I think that obviously if and when we get to the point where like, you know, these orgs that are putting together these actions, you know, they have budgets, they have the, you know, fiscal infrastructure to function like on a level that's just super, you know, um, just efficient, you know, because a lot of these orgs, I mean, they can bring together, you know, 5,000 people somewhere, but you'll find out that they don't necessarily have this great fiscal infrastructure that, um, you know, that you would assume they have, right. They just have that connection to the community. But um, I think, you know, I mean, if you're into this work for the money, then you probably shouldn't be doing, it, you know, in, in all honesty, I mean, you know, go take, you know, photos of, I don't know, um, you know, go do what, I mean, yeah, I don't know, you know, figure out something else to take photos of, you know what I mean? There's a, a, a ton of, you know, there's a lot of different industries of photography you can get into if you want to do it for the money. You know, I think when it comes to, you know, this level of documentation in the communities in Chicago, um, you know, yeah, it's, it's more about, I think, the work that needs to be done because there's just all these communities, right? Like, uh, Isaiah just brought up, you know, communities that are even further south, like, you know, I, I've had friends that grew up in Roseland, you know what I mean? And their experiences are crazy, you know, um, and their history is incredibly fascinating and super intense, but we've never heard of it, you know, just because it's so far. So, um, you know, I think at the core, you know, you have to be in it for the right reasons too, you know, and and I think that um, you know, with any sort of, uh, you know, path that you take as a creative, I mean, you just have to just keep at it and, and keep doing it, you know? Uh, yeah, that's, I hope that answered your question. <laughs> it did. definitely did. Um, yeah, I think, uh, like Mateo said, there are organizations that have budgets, and if they can pay photographers, you know, that, that's great. Um, but also, like, for me personally, you know, I, I have a full time job, so I don't, I don't need to be paid uh, to, um, to be able to survive. And so, I consider the photography as part of my organizing because when I first was politicized, I literally knew nothing about organizing. I didn't know what I could contribute, but I knew how to use the camera. Um, and I think about um, Maria Varela, who was a, a photographer for SNCC. 
And um, the reason she started taking photos was like she picked up the camera because there was a need for documentation, you know, as part of the organizing, as part of the work. And so she's like, okay, I'm going to do this. Um, and so that's primarily why I do it. But I know that there are um, photographers who do, um, for, for them, if that is their primary, you know, way of, um, of making a livelihood, then organizations that do have the budget, you know, and, and a lot of them do, um, and, but they, they don't realize that photography is labor, that photography is really physically intensive labor, um, as is video work. Um, and to be able to recognize that in some way, whether it's through compensation or some other way, whether it's supporting um, GoFundMes, you know, when we need to replace our equipment, which we often do, you know, I have messed up my equipment multiple times, you know, um, documenting things. So yeah, I do, I do think that there needs to be some kind of support. Um, but for those of us who do this as part of our organizing, um, I don't expect that to be like a regular thing, you know, like I, I don't expect compensation for the photography that I do. Yeah, thank you again, all of you. Um, we're kind of like reaching, we're getting a little bit closer to the end. So I'm gonna kind of try to bridge these questions a little bit. But if you do have questions, if you're here and you wanna go ahead and throw them in the chat so you make sure we get to them, please do. If not, it's fine. Um, but this is a question that you've all touched on a little bit, but I again, just wanna ask it a little bit more directly. Um, when you're documenting, when you're photographing, when you're filming, how do you consider your identities, your personal identities when documenting in movement space and specifically when you're documenting in communities or neighborhoods that you're not personally a part of what do you keep in mind or what steps do you take to ensure that you're doing so mindfully um all right i'm uh okay cool i'll, I'll try to answer the first question in the second one um yeah so as far as identity um yeah, I, like I said, I think that's something that I really started wrestling with in this past year, um, just because like uh, going to Sarah's um, point, like I, I there was really like a real disconnect um, in this past year as far as like uh, folks not knowing what's going on on the South side, um, especially like uh, I would say it was in like deeper out South. Um, and, and it was just like a lot of work being done. Like uh, folks are not familiar with Nita's Love Train, um, she does like mutual aid, like almost every day, you know what I'm saying? Like, like Good Kids, Mad City, um, um, Black Rising, Her Chicago, like these organizations be busting their ass, you know, to, to, to really make sure that folks have what they need as much as humanly possible out South and out West, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, yeah, I think uh, for me, I, I, I just really, just because I, I, again, I wasn't thinking about, you know, the, abilities I had to be able to use my voice. Um, I was more so just like, you know, I'm behind the camera. This is my way of contributing to the community. Um, and so I, I never really thought much else of it, you know what I'm saying? But like after I got arrested um, and then after the uh, Millennium Bean protest that took place last year where a lot of youth uh, were br brutally uh, hurt and arrested by the police, um, I, I, I really tried to make sure like, that was something that would never happen again. Um, and so, you know, when it comes to really a lot of stuff right now, like I try to make sure my voice is used as much as possible uh, or when it's necessary. Um, and so, you know, even thinking about that, like I never really thought about, you know, the fact that people are looking at me for like, you know, what's going on on the South side or whatever like that. And I was, it was just more, more so something like that was needed, something that was important. Cause it was like, after the looting took place out South, um, like I live up the street from like two gas stations right now that are still boarded up from the looting. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, that hasn't still been taken care of. Like there's a lot of like, just a lot of messed up stuff out South right now from what happened this past year. Um, and no one's talking about it, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and I mean, I could say the same thing about a lot of this city, um, but I think when it came to, like, when it came to people knowing who I am, you know, for what I'm doing, it's like, okay, 
if you can focus on that, then focus on the fact that, you know, there are black and brown youth that are homeless and they need like immediate like access to funds for housing and and and, and just mental health resources. You know what I'm saying? Like if you if you're gonna keep like looking at my photos, realize that I am sharing like literally black and brown youth go fund these every fucking day. You know what I mean? Like use like like get what you need from my platform, which is information to better this community. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like on both, on all of our platforms, that's been something that we've been trying to do. Um, and what was the second part of the question? <laughs> I think you pretty much answered it. I asked, um, how do you consider identity when you're in communities and neighborhoods that you're not personally a part of? What steps do you keep in mind to ensure you're doing so mindfully? Yeah, um, I, I think in that case, um, so I, I think, like, again, going to uh, the organizing aspect, right? Um, I think for me, that's definitely where I let it be known, like, okay, this is what I want to contribute. Um, and it always kind of goes from there. Um, like, even again, in the past year, uh, when I was, you know, um, in, in Pilsen, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, when I was more like Southwest or whatever like that, um, because we were helping to organize, we always made sure we asked, was it okay for a photographer or an organizer or a speaker to even take up space in that community? Um, and yeah, I think that's something that we always try to check in on, you know what I'm saying? So I don't think that's ever just a photographer thing. That's just like, you know, you aren't like native to this community, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, ask, is it okay for you to take up space in this type of demeanor or oh, not? So, yeah. Um, yeah, so this is something that I grapple with a lot because most of what I document um, is uh, primarily in um, black and brown led spaces. Um, and as a, you know, I'm a Korean, um, Korean American immigrant, queer um, woman, um, I have to be mindful, you know, um, of that. And so for me, it's important to be accountable um, to the organizers um, of the actions that I'm documenting. And um, oftentimes what I document, um, even if I'm not part of the community or that neighborhood, um, I most likely will have a relationship um, with um, at least the orgs that are part of it or with some of the organizers. Um, and I usually don't go and document actions that I have absolutely no idea what they're about um, or that I don't have any kind of connection to um, in some way, uh, whether it's through the organizing world or whether it's through, you know, personal relationships. Um, and I think that accountability is really important um, for me uh, personally. Um, and I... It, it helps me to be a better documenter um, because it, it it builds trust, you know, and this is trust that I've built over a number of years with many of these organizers. Um, and to be honest, the first action I ever documented, I was basically a pretty apolitical mom on the north side who knew how to use a camera. And I heard about um, something happening in Pilsen at uh, Whittier Dual Language Academy at La Casita. And this was back in September of 2010 when some parents took over La Casita, which was a field house that was part of the school that CPS was trying to demolish. And they started a 24 seven occupation. And I found out about it through Facebook and I decided, I don't know any of these people, but I'm gonna show up because I know how to use a camera. Maybe I can help, which is, not something that I advise people to do because I had absolutely no connection to anyone, you know, in that community or with any of the organizers. Um, but the one thing that I did do was I was, because I knew absolutely nothing, I listened to everything that the organizers asked me to do and basically did exactly what they asked me to do. Um, and that was more out of my ignorance of like knowing what else I could do. Um, but that was key in terms of 
um, learning what it means to be in solidarity um, with a community that I wasn't a part of, you know, but I cared about education justice and this was a fight about education justice. Um, it was it was a fight about racism. It was a fight um, about, you know, how resources are distributed, you know, in the city. And, um, th and that it was that struggle that um, taught me so much about solidarity. And um, that's something that I have to practice, you know, because of my identities, you know, in the spaces that I show up to and document. Uh, I just think you need to communicate. I think that's it. You know, um, if your heart's in the right place, then you're going to be good. You know, um, I mean, uh, you know, when I went to the action at Chinatown to, you know, denounce Asian hate, I mean, I'm not Asian, you know, I don't speak Mandarin, but uh, growing up in Pilsen, a lot of us go to Chinatown all the time, you know, um, they're like the next community over. So, um, you know, I just communicated with people, even though, you know, I might not have spoke their, their native language. I was like, Hey, you know, can I take a photo? And like, you know, I think people were glad that I was there or that there was some, you know, someone trying, right. You know, to document, um, the fact that they were there. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I think it's just about communication and about what your, you know, what your motive is and kind of like, you know, I think Sarah uh, spoke to that really well. Um, you know, as long as like you're there to, you know, not just help, but you're there because you understand what the action is about and you're in support of that action, then I mean, I think you'll be good. Thank you, thank you again. So our last question, um, before we kind of wrap things up and see if anybody else has any questions to add. Um, but we, we're beginning to see a lot more articles and commentary talking about the mental health of those, not only documenting movements, but movements on top of a global pandemic, on top of crushing climate change, you know, this, that, and the third, all of these different things, and then also movements. So what have you learned about yourselves and your mental health journeys while documenting over the last year? Ooh. Um, damn. What have I learned? Hmm. So, I mean, okay. I think I, I very much so am still learning like in this very moment, um, just kind of like how to exist um, in, in this community and in and, and, and doing this work. Um, I, I definitely wrestled with how I was going to exist this entire past year, um, after I got arrested, um, like a lot of things like shifted for me, um, just because like, like I was like, I, I really could not breathe when I was in actual, I was when I was in the actual process of getting arrested, like I, I, I really was having like breathing issues and stuff like that. And so like, afterwards you know what i'm saying and then like realizing i didn't get centered when i even got arrested um like the other organizers that are with me did um it, it was weird because it's like when it first happened and when people first even started telling me i was just like okay you know what i mean that's fine you know what i'm saying like i didn't think anything of it because it was a, like you know i've been in this community for so long and i've been you know trying to make sure like you know it's not about me it's not about me it's not about me it's about the work it's about the work it's about the work and and i had a moment this past year where i just like completely broke down and i was like damn like no one really supports what i'm doing like no one really cares about my actual well-being like people just want to like use my photos and you know I just had a real I I, I don't even know how to, what to call it I had to, I just it was just like a very like it, I had to really just reevaluate a lot of things and so um you know with the fact that and again like my only perspective was doing the work right so when I did stuff with Southside Weekly this past year with with, with the Chicago Reader like doing those covers, um, the, the the front page covers I did with them, like those projects was about me just making sure that the word got out about what is going on in this city. You know what I mean? And and I wasn't thinking about, 
you know, really, my, I wasn't thinking about my health, to be honest with you. I wasn't really thinking about my mental health. And I really was thinking about, you know, I, I wasn't thinking about how, to, how I was valued. I was more so less like, you know, I need to be replaceable. Um, I feel like that's something I heard a lot. I, I have heard a lot in movement spaces as of late, uh, or maybe in the past couple of years is that, you know, folks in this, in these spaces should not be, um, like they, they should be replaceable. And like, while I agree with that, I also understand that like, things are just changing, right? Like, I truthfully feel like people were not looking at my work until I got arrested, if I'm being completely honest with you. And it's not something I like, it's, it's like, it doesn't bother me, but it is something that I, I, I have really taken into account when it comes to what I'm posting. Um, because I would like to think I'm an artist or a creative first, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm an organizer, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a you know, movement photographer, but I'm also creative. And so um, I think for me, it, it, I would just like to be treated as such. Um, and I mean, you know, respected as such, you know what I'm saying? And I, I feel like in the past year, I have really had to stand on my ground and really have people respect what it is that I'm doing and what it is that I'm contributing. Um, and I mean, even if it's just like crediting what it is that I've done, you know what I'm saying? Like, like that is important, you know what I'm saying? And for me, like I said, my bread and butter is my photography, you know what I mean? So like you telling someone, oh yeah, I've seen, you know, this work, you know what I'm saying? This comes from this person and it's about this thing. Like it, it's it's not even more about telling it something about me. It's about you're, you're, you're opening someone else's eyes to a community that people don't see a lot, you know what I'm saying? And I think, in that you have to realize like like that's important you know what i'm saying and so i really had to start understanding like i am important you know what i'm saying like even now i think i take more selfies of myself just on some like i need to see my own fucking face you know what i mean and i have to realize like you know i love this city like i i truly truly love like this city and it's like i also need to love myself you know what I mean? So it's like, if, if y'all have ever, if people have ever read my words or my captions or whatever, you know, it do be me on some in my feeling shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, 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 it's, you know, I think that's something that we don't talk about a lot. And so I'm realizing that I am representing more than just a photographer. I'm representing a Black cis hetero man that is okay with being emotional and is okay with doing like the healing work you know, that goes alongside being in this community. And I think that's something we don't talk about enough is how, you know, you have to heal and you have to be in the process of healing while being in, you know, these type of spaces. And I think that's something that, you know, from getting arrested to being a survivor of domestic violence all in the past like year is like, I've, I've been really trying to be more like, like just, centered on that you know what i'm saying so like even when you know um, uh, when i see sarah g's page i see you know i see her just like really you know just happy with like her her little one and her boo thing i'm just like yes you know what i'm saying it's like it's more to us you know what i'm saying than just you know the the, the photos we have you know what i'm saying like you look at mateo's page you know what I'm saying? i realized that me and him actually share the same relationship with a with a dude named uh Ronadette who used to do like who does a lot of like music shit in the city you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, fuck, like, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's just like really enjoying or trying to enjoy being in this community. You know what I'm saying? I feel like in this past year, I've met so many dope ass people and they wanted to talk to me because they're like, damn, like he looked like he he's pretty cool. You know what I'm saying? Like he does or he cares about something besides himself. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's really cool. Is like all three of us on this panel we care about more than just ourselves, which is why we even met in the first place. So, yeah. Yeah, I think um, this past year has been really intense um, in terms of the protests and everything else going on um, in the world. And with the pandemic on top of that as well, like all that's real. and. Um, like secondary trauma is, um, I think something that, you know, as documenters we can experience. Um, 
I, I've never witnessed so much violence, um, like firsthand as I have um, in this past year of documenting. Um, and I think it's important to have, um, and I'm really honestly not very good at this, you know, in terms of taking care of myself. Like that's not something that I think about, you know, um, too much, you know, like therapy definitely has been helpful for me. Um, that's something that I've, I've been fortunate to have access to um, this past year during the pandemic and the past several, several years. Um, and also just, I think being plugged into a community um, that you, who can know who, you know, know what your struggles are and know when you're at an action, you know, so that they can check in with you afterwards to make sure, you know, did you eat, you know, like, have you gotten sleep, you know, like, um, how are your elbows feeling, you know, things like that. Um, I think that can be helpful as well. And um, building a community is, it's not easy, you know, it's like, you have to put yourself out there to build that community, you have to be vulnerable, you know, um, to build those kinds of relationships. Um, and it also, you know, it's a mutual thing. It's like, we have to be there for each other, you know, to um, take care of each other and to look out for each other. And I think that's an important part of the work that we do as well. Yeah, no, I mean, both of them, both of you all brought up some really good points. Um, I mean, yeah, I think, I think, uh, you know, for men period, especially of color, it's hard for you to, you know, uh, express or feel vulnerable enough to talk about whatever it is you're going through, especially with like Latinos, because just the whole macho shit, you know, which is just generational. Um, not an excuse. I'm just saying, it's, you know, it's not new. Um, and no, I mean, yeah, I think that it's important for, uh, you know, documenters to talk about where they're at because um they're also people right like um Isaiah was saying like I mean I've been around violence like for a, yeah since I was an adolescent you know what I mean so I mean that's not new to me necessarily but you know obviously being like at the front line of certain situations and certain stories and injustices you know that you see and then you know you or literally within the same space as like a family that just had, you know, uh, a tragic loss due to, you know, like a police officer that maybe killed someone in their family or, you know, like I, it's interesting. I told, um, told a friend of mine, I don't think he really got it when I said it, cause he kind of changed the subject, I think. But uh, I told him, I was like, I'm tired of writing about death. Um, and I think I told him that uh, like a month ago, maybe, or something. Um, and, you know, it was something that I had to kind of like, you know, deal with, you know, because it was just like, um, it was a lot of the same sort of like cyclical, uh, you know, story happening again, different family, different block, different situation. Um, but, you know, I, I think I say I might have said this earlier um, or Sarah, I'm not sure one of you said, I mean, this also just isn't, you know, for the week, you know, like this is not trendy, you know, this isn't like, you know, if you're out here for the gram, like, you know, and yeah, it's it's hella, you know, hilarious to see like people that I never like, you know, saw even supposedly claim their community before the year 2020. You know what I'm saying? So um yeah, I mean, I think there's, you know, there's definitely people that are in it, you know, uh, because they genuinely, you know, have and, and want to. But when it comes to the mental health aspect, yeah, no, I think it's something that I don't think anyone recommends us to do or suggests that we do. And sometimes, you know, uh, not everybody has someone that they could necessarily just completely, you know, open up to or vent to or just kind of navigate whatever they're going through at the time with. Um, but yeah, no, I think it's important. And, you know, obviously for me, writing helps with that, you know, but I think there's a lot of different ways to go about doing that. And it's definitely something that should always be, um, you know, a part of the conversation. 
for sure. Yeah, thank you all again. Snaps all around. Um, thank you so much with not just sharing your wisdom, but being vulnerable in this space tonight. We are completely at time. I always run over. I don't know. Maybe one day I'll get it right. Um, but thank you again. Thank you so, so, so much. Um, do I, any of the three of you have something you want to plug? Have any last notes? I put everyone's Twitter and IG handles in the chat, but is there anything else that the three of you want to plug? Or any last notes? Um, yeah. Uh, if folks, I mean, I can, and you can also follow my um, Instagram too, but um, Barry uh, particularly is a uh, member of Good Kids Mad City. Um, unfortunately, her and her friend, got held up by gunpoint um so like they they stole like their laptop like they like everything right so if y'all really about trying to hop into doing this community shit as soon as possible you can go on my instagram and just donate to her um cash app and Vimo. um again like like this person does a lot a lot of work with good kids in my city and again like she needs that stuff right so like if you know um y'all want to donate y'all can again go to my story uh, her information should be in there. Or something um, I'll link it yeah. in the chat. Oh yeah, that's that's even better. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, that's the biggest. That's the thing I can think of right now. Thank you. Anything else? Um, you know, yeah. Just obviously, you know, I'm glad to connect with everybody. And you know, if you ever have a friend or if you know someone that does, you know, this sort of work, just support them in whatever way you can. You know, and check in on them. That's you know, that's what I would say. But appreciate everybody tuning in uh, today for sure. Awesome. Oh, yeah, I just. Sorry, I, I just want to thank everyone for showing up. I don't do panels very often. And, you know, Grace, thank you so much for making this really painless. Um, and I also just wanted to plug um, this Saturday at 2 p.m. There's a youth led um, rally in March um, for treatment, not trauma in Albany, or it's going to be in Logan Square. And I am just going to put the link for the Facebook event in the chat. Amazing, perfect. Thank you. So yeah, make sure you all get those links out of the chat, um, but I can also send them out in email as well. But again, thank you so much, Sarah G, Thought Poet, Mateo, for sharing this piece with us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate y'all so much. And thank you for everyone coming out, taking this time, taking your time on the first day of Pride Month, on this Tuesday evening. Um, appreciate y'all. So yeah, have a good night, everyone. Bye.